What's happening in our family? It's Tay Payton of the Beginner Drawing Course, and today we're going to be going through my art journey. So this is something that's very near and dear to my heart, and I'm really pleased to share what I can with you. Unfortunately, I don't have drawings from when I was a kid like some of the other videos you might find on YouTube, and that's because my home life was less than stable. And without going into the details, let's just say I moved around a lot and I didn't have a chance to archive what I was doing at seven years old, etc. It wasn't held onto by my parents who had their own things that they were handling in life. But needless to say, I'm fortunate that I was uploading to the internet as soon as I could. We're going to look at some of that today and where I'm at now in terms of my artistic journey and how I've progressed. And I'm really, really excited to share it with you. So let's dive in, get ready for a little bit of cringe and a little bit of inspiration and just a lot of fun. So here we go drawing who I considered my teacher and my sensei. So I hung around Newgrounds a lot and I met somebody named Soul Snake, which was a nice um, lady from Korea and somebody who was one or two years younger than me who was just better at art than me, who I considered my uh, teacher. And then the girl from Korea was my sensei and they were helping me get better at art. And this is my fan art of S. Cry Ed, which is an anime. And it was my attempt at foreshortening. As you can see, the fist is like right in your face. And that's me trying to draw that at 15, despite not having a whole lot of technical drawing fundamentals or understanding of drawing in general, just winging it as hard as I possibly could. Um, we also have Leap Boy, I guess. And yeah, this was where my head was at at 15. I was like, yeah, Leap was really a thing. And so I was like, let's make myself a hoodie with Leap Boy. And I also have like, glasses for some reason, even though I don't need glasses. However, uh, I did end up buying some circular glasses, but I'm not going to wear them because they're probably really reflective in the camera and very distracting. I, I could have been uh, an artist that draws certain things that I, I guess I ended up not doing, fortunately. And here's a self-portrait, which is always fun to mark artistic progress. I was 17 when I did this, so um, you know, this was one of the first things I colored in Photoshop, I believe. You can see the lines are very uncertain, very hairy, and the mouse is looks like a cloven hoof, I guess. Like, it's just, you can tell I still didn't understand a lot about drawing, even though I've been drawing for years and years at this point. So I would say that I didn't have a lot of talent, but I had a lot of tenacity. And that's where I started to, you know, finally begin to work on some of these things like construction, you know, trying to understand how the heck I can get, uh, you know, something to look volumetric or dimensional, even though all of this is way, way off. I was trying a lot of different things stylistically, like, you know, bowler outlines with more thin interior lines, even though I didn't understand form, so everything looked really flat and I'm not going with the form. Stuff that I teach in my beginner drawing course now because, gosh, guys, it's just, it just wrecks the art if you don't know how to make it good. And it's like, I knew things were off for so long and people would try to give me critique on forums, but it was like the blind leading the blind and I just could not figure out for the life of me how I was going to get better. And this was a character design I did for another animation fight thing. And you can tell like stuff is just really flattening out. There's, you know, some volume and some dimension with overlap, but for the most part, it's just really stylized. Really portions are all off. The character design is all weird. Like I just, I'm just trying to have fun at this point, but I'm probably really frustrated if I remember correctly. These are from when I was 16. This is a picture of me at 15 eating a burrito at the house I stayed at the longest in my whole life, which is the house where most of the art was lost at. Um, and just, you know, me chilling, having a baby face, eating burrito. Um, I think I actually got a comment uh, where somebody was like, they, like they had two people on this account, which was weird. And Kira's like, yay burrito. Erica's like, definitely not the best looking guy. And so I'm like, it's real nice. Thanks, Erica. Really appreciate that. Fortunately, I grew up to look all right, so I'm not too mad about it. Anyway, we have, a, like I said, just not great drawings, drawing stuff like fan art of characters I enjoyed, like Teen Titans. I was a really big fan of Teen Titans back in the day, and I actually have some good compare and contrast, so stick around. There's some awesome Teen Titans art coming up. Bad Eno fan art from Naruto, where she looks like an old grandma. I recently did a video redoing this piece, so you can check that out in the description box for my, you know, drawing course. Um, she looks like an old grandma, bad proportions, don't understand lots, you know, overlapping forms are kind of there, but the line art itself is just so bad. And even though I knew how to clean stuff up, I would just sketch and sketch and make messes and not, you know, clean them up and didn't understand I had inattentive ADHD. But when I discovered that, my art got a lot better because I knew how to work with it as opposed to against it. Now that we've kind of stopped at 2007, where I was 17 years old, Let's go to 2009. I was in college at this point. So I was, uh, you know, transitioning from 17 to 18 and I was in college for about a year now. And you can see that stuff started to get a little bit better. I started to see 
things in ways that made a lot more sense. And so this is June 18th, 2009, and I have a cooler style. My style is starting to finally emerge after drawing for years and years and years and making lots of ugly drawings. When I went to art school, I took it very sincerely. Even though I don't recommend art school for most people, and I oftentimes regret going, like I said, the people were priceless, but the school itself, we'll make a video about it. Anyway, so this piece I was really very proud of because it shows dynamic action. It shows like a cool shot. He's like breaking out of prison. It's awesome. And he's got like, you know, smoke effects and other stuff I was seeing in anime. I was stoked about this piece, guys. I really liked it. Okay, so this one is again, something really cool and really close to my heart because I was watching things like Fooly Cooly and there's one part where the little robot stops this giant robot hand that comes in and he just like beats up the giant robot afterwards and it's just really cool. Yeah, you can see that the work was starting to pay off at this point. The mileage was adding up even though I still um, didn't have these drawing principles. I didn't discover drawing principles until I was like closer to 20 at conceptart.org forums, which are now defunct sadly. So this one I really liked. Uh, let's look at some other ones that are kind of cool. This is just embarrassing. People were drawing themselves super buff on Newgrounds for some reason. But I did, I did like bodybuilding, I did like lifting, but I never thought I would get this huge, but I guess it was like kind of a fan art for Johnny Utah or something like he's some other Newgrounds artist. So some my my way of like taking that and running with that. We have some of my earlier paintings, which were really flat and really sad. Cause again, understanding drawing is one thing. Understanding shading, form, dimension, light, shadow is another. So uh, <laughs> uh, there's some swears about the landscape. Watch your profanity. And I know I'm bad at it. And I'm like, but this is me trying. And it's just like the worst tree ever and the flattest little thing in a bad composition. And just like using the worst Photoshop default brush you possibly can for grass. And you know, just hacking everything, trying to wing everything discovering things by failing, basically, knowing what I didn't like and trying to root around in the dark long enough to find some light in the art. And so this was, you know, a, it looks like it's, like it's such a sad pug. It's like, please help me. I'm not shaded correctly and my back leg is broken. It's like, it's so ugly. It's so not good. Oh man, but it's, it's my art. I can trash my old art. It's fine. I mean, you know, it's just, even if you're like looking at this and like, oh, he's being really mean to it. Like, don't take it personal if this, if you're at this level or if your stuff is not here yet, because I fought a long time for this. And that's why I do what I do now so that people don't have to fight for progress like I had to fight for it. Um, so this is a better thing, arguably. Like I somehow was able to separate light and shadow enough to get some form for this creature. I was starting to slightly learn painting in addition to drawing. And this is like one of the things I consider my first almost kind of successful painting, where I was doing fan art of a character from a friend on DeviantArt, and I really liked their character, their character design. And even though there's a lot of drawing issues in this one and like some weird stuff going on with like a gradient choice and some chain brushes and stuff, I started to use texture differently. I started to have a background and foreground and I would just like block in a dark silhouette and try to like carve out light by just blasting it with brush strokes. And we're starting to get some actual form here. I was just getting lucky because I was beating on the art so much and overworking it and it's still not like good but it's getting better like I'm starting to understand how form works by digging into the shadow pulling out light and just getting in there getting messy and trying to make it less muddy just through sheer force of will which again not the way I would recommend doing it but it's the way I did it so in this video I was a fan of Silent Hill 2 it's my favorite Silent Hill um, I'm not that big into horror anymore, but this is when I was 20 years old. So, you know, I kind of like this one. It's still horrific in terms of the anatomy. All these deep, terrible lines, you know, going into shadow and pulling out and not understanding how to do the separations of form and line and shading and where each thing goes on the picture plane. But, you know, it still was fan art and I still was doing stuff I enjoyed at the time. So we got uh, the biggie. The biggie, I liked drawing creatures a lot. and. Uh, I really got a lot of room to play with those creatures and I was starting to use texture in my work, starting to like overlay textures and make it look like it was on a canvas. But look at this crop, man. Like I would just leave the canvas whatever size I made it and just let stuff run into the edges of it because I didn't understand how to work it. Um, this one was just better designed in general. I started to use those techniques I was learning with form and light and shadow and put them into context with this character, which was Tricky the Clown from the Madness series. Again, very dark series. Wouldn't recommend it if you're under 18 or if you're not super edgy. 
but it's it's kind of cool. It was really popular on Newgrounds, and a lot of my inspiration came from Newgrounds at the time. I did a lot of my growing on Newgrounds. This was a college assignment. Uh, I don't remember what the assignment was, but he said I could paint it digitally, and so I did. And so it's basically just like a better illustration than that druid standing on the rocks, but not by much. It's just like a jellyfish in the middle of the field, like in this character from what looks like an MMORPG, just like a classic, I don't know, kind of ninja dude with a bad costume design and some weird brush strokes trying to go and think if he's going to fight it or not. Well, the trees look kind of big in the background and that feels fantastic. We're starting to get a little more sense of illustration, a little more sense of world building here, which wasn't happening before. I'm 20 years old at this point, so I've been, you know, messing with art on and off since I was like seven. And now we're finally starting to, again, get a little more progress. And this is where you can see I had a lot more experience at this point. I, my drawing mileage was like four or five X, my painting mileage. So when I would paint something, it'd actually get way worse. Whereas when I was drawing, it was actually kind of cool. Like this pose starting to work a little bit. You know, it's not perfect. It's very stylized, but it's dynamic. He's like twisting his body. He's got his sword. He's got his angles. He's got his pieces of cloth. We have this desperado dude with like cool little double guns and like stitches on his outfit. Uh, you know, this rad chick with the, you know, bust that was drawn very bad and looks fake, but um, cool swords. It was probably like tr inspired by Transistor maybe, which was a cool indie game that came out by the same people who made Hades. Um, I love chameleons. I've always loved chameleons for some reason. So uh, this is a drawing that I detailed up of like a, you know, odd chameleon thing. Um, this is a cool sort of turtle I just started throwing a lot of texture on and a lot of shading and form and figuring out how to do that kind of stuff in the sketchbook. So you can see um, I, I kind of translated what I was doing way earlier into stuff that's just more complex but a little more um, informed as far as like understanding shapes and understanding anatomy and, f and uh, understanding how proportions and stuff fits together. So this one is really cool still. I kind of like the weapons man sir. He's really cool but uh, he's got like a super prominent like nut cup which I don't know why. It's like I yes I can float all these weapons but please don't kick me there. If you're gonna go swinging weapons you want to make sure that the, the uh, meat and veggies are safe. Uh, dragons, of course, you know, lots of detail, lots of rendering on the pencil work, but still very stylized, not super realistic, and I don't understand a lot about form and light without line and texture. Line and texture are something that came very, you know, more naturally to me than form and shading, which I'm still, you know, conceiving and working on to this day, which is why my drawing course has been way more successful than my painting course and why I've elaborated on one of them and not the other. You can see when I started to simplify things and there's no like transition of edges, like no soft blended edges anywhere, like I'm trying to blend edges here, but you know, it's like a halfway hybrid between drawing and painting that just is not going well. There's a little bit better form in this lance, but again, really weird textural choices, didn't know how to draw boobs, etc. Um, but then we simplify things down here into just basic planar shapes, you know, no edge transitions. This was made in Flash instead of Photoshop. So you can't really blend in Flash unless you add a filter, which blurs stuff out. So in this case, I was just learning to work with shape and value in clean, chunky separations. No uh, transitions, because transitions are so muddy and hard to master, and transitions meaning edges. So I teach a lot more about edges in the beginner drawing course and how to start to get out of the... Um, you know, blocked outlook, but blocking is the way to keep it simple and nice and to separate light and shadow. I still recommend it to this day if you're learning how to, you know, work with light and shadow. I really like this guy still. And then you go into this again, where it's like we don't really know when to paint the lines out, what tone to use, what color to use. The complexity just goes way up. And so you're handling too much to make a good piece. It falls apart on so many levels. It took a, like three and a half hours, but such heavy lines and such bad like textures and forms and transitions don't understand metal don't understand how to study don't understand cloth but just hacking away at all of it as hard as i could with brush strokes which pro tip just don't do that just don't simplify stuff until it looks good and then start to slowly add complexity uh it just it's the way to go because you need to learn these things piece by piece by piece one after another it doesn't, if you try to attack them all at once, you just get mud like this, even if you have some modicum of like mileage. So we tackle the fundamentals little by little with different exercises until you understand the fundamental enough to bring it into the process. Otherwise, you're just mashing stuff together. And it's like when you mix all the colors of paint, it just like makes like a weird green brown. And it just doesn't, doesn't please anybody. You got to know how to work with this stuff. So this is a little bit better, you know, more simple. Uh, the land eater type dude and it was working a little nicer a little more interesting kind of a cool idea of like a thing coming up biting the land I think it's again inspired by Adventure Time 
Um, we have this, which is, again, a way bigger step forward in what I'm comfortable with, which is line, texture, and mark making in the line, and then just coloring that and shading that lightly, knowing where the shading works and where it doesn't. And this is where I you know, discovered that again when I was 21 with this cool sort of gas mask, stylized, beefy dude with the little gun. It's, it's kind of a decent piece still to this day to me. Uh, and then we have the melon cat which I like the melon cat. Cat giving a thumbs up, he's all green. It's like kind of a cat melon hybrid. It's like the practice of painting these ideas together. And you can see there's almost no line art here. And I'm starting to understand how to create like a little silhouette without lines and then to pull form out of that silhouette um, and just make something that looks enjoyable. And I drew a lot of cats in my sketchbook because my mom had a lot of cats. So I was always drawing them and I understood them reasonably well. And this is still one of my favorite pieces to this day is this little melon cat because it's like the hybrid of a cat and a melon. And it's just so pleasant. It's like, it sounds like an anime studio or something, you know? I drew a lot of, you know, random creatures and humanoid creatures inspired by Magic the Gathering. And this guy was like, you know, just this trident-esque guy with weird separative plates. And again, doing this weird heavy line thing or not painting all the way to the edge of something or past the edge of something so it still had a line on it which looks really weird some of the separations within the metal are getting kind of cool but it's just like rendering each little piece out like they're i don't know little beads or droplets of water or something it doesn't make a lot of sense but it was really fun to do i guess because again my my modality has just been to push all my energy into something and even if i don't know the fundamentals i'll just make up for what i don't understand with lots of passion and energy and excitement and pushing hard so the drawing on this is pretty decent but as you can see the painting stage needs some help this one this girl is busted like she just looks terrible in general in this art and i just wanted to make sure that it was something that i just fix going forward which is why you see I, I do a lot of um girl drawings and female figure drawings because my girls were broken for a long time i could not draw a girl very well to save my life especially an attractive one so i worked hard on that but this guy right here pretty dope it's kind of like the melon cat you know where i was getting something that looked reasonable it looked reasonably cool um and he's just like a lot of like dark shapes starting to pull out the light shapes starting to grab the different values and understand them better. Like this ear is kind of crappy, but you're getting the texture of the brushwork. You're getting like these crazy toothy beasts that she was supposed to control. And this guy is like, not too bad. Like the blacks are obviously pretty crushed down in this image. Then we have uh, this dude, Chameleon Blitz. It was just my character from Gaia Online. I got, I got everything I wanted because it wasn't that expensive. And I made my avatar in like a week and I was done with Gaia Online. I just drew my avatar. I'm like, ha, got it, did it, all done. Cool, and I moved on to going back to art. Uh, this one's awful. This one's terrible. I use this as an example of what not to do. Portraits are so hard, and you can spend so long working on portraits. This is Marina from Mischief Makers, which was a cool game I rented from Blockbuster way back before I even went to college. And I wanted to do fan art of that girl, but I just didn't have the skill. The drawing skill wasn't strong enough. And so the face turned out so ugly that it motivated me to do like a hundred faces after this. Cause I spent like way too long rendering everything out, drawing every little strand of hair, trying to make the geometry of her outfit look right and the form look right and rendering it and using every technique I knew to try and like blanket and render on top of something broken, which is the worst thing you can do. And you just, you want to fix the drawing, everything at the drawing stage. If the drawing is not working, everything falls apart. And if you don't know how to render your drawing, you'll just destroy your drawing along the way. So there's lots of pitfalls to learn to avoid, which is why, again, I'm so passionate about doing what I do now. So passionate about teaching fundamentals, principles, checklists, ways of organizing your art so that you get the result at the end of like that one hour session or that 100 hour session. Sometimes you get a little lucky. This one I really liked. I was 22 at the time. I was just about to graduate. I think I actually showed my portfolio to a professional and he's like, this is your best piece. This is one of your best pieces. Like robots have always made sense to me. I used to build Bionicles a lot, used to build a lot of like Gundam models. So I love robots still, just like I love creatures. And it's like, yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff going on here, but the rendering here started to change. Like everything is still really crushed and really in the black, but I was pulling out enough form and I was leaving my lines where they should be, which is, you know, almost non-existent. And I was making all these cool shapes and like, you know, the subdivision stuff looks a lot more natural when you're doing it with robots as opposed to armor or other weird stuff. But still there's a lot of weird design stuff in here I wouldn't quite do. It's like a giant mailbox that he's like shooting a green beam at. And so, you know, there's still a lot wrong with it. Still a lot of weird stuff going on, but it's still got that dynamism that I love, which is the action, the Sakuga I was so inspired by when I was uh, growing up watching all the Japanese animation. 
and we have this guy, which is the complete opposite of what I like, what I like for a turn. I spent 20 hours on this piece of piece of freaking yuck. And I just, to this day, I, I, I really don't like it. It's like a dragon like barfing lava in front of a knight who's holding up a green sword that it's just it's just not good. It's just not good. There's not very much appealing about it. The dragon has those weird inner lines that I was always doing at the time where I just like render the random crap out of something and make it look detailed and hope that it turns out okay. And you know, just all these muscles and like schmorfing together and muddiness. It's just, it's not enough separation. You don't understand the separation of light and value and shadow. It's like, I'm trying, you know, these rocks have shadows coming off from them. Like I'm trying to discover light, how to render with light. But the problem was my brushwork and my process. So there was no fixing that even after 20 hours. So here's our next chapter where despite studying media arts and animation for four years, I was not ready to enter the field skill wise. So I went to crimsondaggers.org, which was started by Dan Warren and Dave Raposa, two fantastic artists and just really cool dudes who have helped foster the illustration and concept art community after conceptart.org went down. And I started a sketchbook and I tracked my patterns and progress. So here is where I make some great strides and some huge mistakes. So you can I see I started studying from photos and my stuff immediately improved. I started to use way more reference because I was at an internship with Fantasy Flight Games and the art director said, your stuff is bad because you don't use enough reference and you're not to the place where you can work without it yet. So I just started using tons of reference, studying item after item of photos I just liked all over the internet. I'm studying masters like John Singer Sargent and this is a pretty bad study to be honest of a beautiful, beautiful painting. I think it's Madam X. Um, but not, again, very great, but still much better than previous paintings in terms of looking like an actual painting and not like a messy line drawing. And then we started doing life studies, which again, were not very strong at first, just putting little items around in, in configurations and kind of just looking at them and trying to study how they look to my eyes and reproduce that with digital paint. And I did a lot of master copies, so again, more uh, portrait studies, more portrait studies, and yeah, you can see these figures and these faces are all not great, but they're still way better than that weird green-haired uh, girl that I did. And then we start getting a little better when we turn to grayscale because who knew, color's hard to work with. It's hard to get your paint and get your color to look right, so you need to go and spend some time in grayscale for a while until things start to make sense to you in terms of edges, brushwork, separation of light and shadows, things like that. So. Uh, I started to still do things from my imagination, which again, you can tell I dropped several levels of realism and skill just because I'm working straight from my head without having enough in my visual library to actually achieve the results I'm looking for. And that goes for whether I'm drawing cowboys or dragons. So you can see here the dragons are better than the one in the sketchbook, but I'm hiding a lot of stuff behind a lot of crappy effects and bad edges and still doing like my blur effect to try and get rid of stuff that doesn't look good. And I'm still spending time in my sketchbook even after art college. So. I'm going in, you know, doing things like making all these designs and still putting way too many plates and pieces that are random and don't make sense because I still didn't understand design. I went to school for animation, so I knew how to do a lot of like frame by frame animation and puppet animation, different types of animation, uh, and even work in 3D, but I didn't know a lot about character design. I didn't know a lot about illustration and concept art because I didn't actually study those things in school. I studied media arts and animation. so. At this point, I'm still going through the sketchbook, still in my comfort zone here because I started off traditionally just sketching with pencil. So making some things that look kind of cool, but when you get really close and break them down, you can see that it's just a bunch of random pay, like pieces and top of mind things that wouldn't really work together in an actual design. But you know, uh, you know I was 22 years old and the drawing looks decent. They look kind of cool, but they're not very workable. So I started to do studies in terms of my sketchbook too. I wasn't just studying with my tablet and my digital paint. I was studying my uh, various references that I found around the web on, uh, you know, characters and figures and eyes and legs and bodies and just a bunch of free reference photos I would copy in my sketchbook just hanging out with my buddy who also went to art school. So then I would try to do stuff from my head and it would work way better because I had that knowledge uh, in the drawing that I didn't have in the painting. Uh, I had better mark making knowledge, a little bit better shading knowledge. I understood how to make things transition with form and planes. And so this is still one of my, you know, it, it still holds a special place in my heart even though it's not, you know, making a lot of sense illustratively. I like the anatomy in uh, some of this piece. I like some of the body types, just some of the cool uh, ideas coming through and some of the shading that looks volumetric and actually starts to reflect what I'm studying. Uh, and then you can see I'm still trying to learn landscapes, still failing pretty hard at those. They're very mushy, very muddy, very gross, every color in the rainbow, etc. Bad brushes. 
Um, just still learning, still trying my best. And then we have a study I did, which is going from the process of a line drawing and painting over everything until you come to a final where the lines are gone. Uh, again, being very focused on the cloth here and not rendering everything out, but just you know getting to a point where it feels like a painting. And again, my painting leveled up quite a bit when I spent a good amount of time on it and I used a lot of reference and I stuck to the reference. That's how my work looked a lot stronger, but then I would go and I would just still do life drawings, life studies to make my stuff look much more uh, realistic. I wanted to understand how light and shadow were working. I wanted to really squint at things and break them down when I was using things like my flash drive, which I don't know if I have that here. I don't think I do, but, or like a just post-it notes on my desk. You just study random stuff and start to understand how uh, light picks up different planes and colors and surfaces and how your brush work reflects that if you pick the right values and edges. So more life studies. This was on top of my buddy's old computer with some weird like coffee maker from the 50s probably and just putting a blanket on top of it and like looking at the rim light of that blanket and seeing how it caught the light that we put on it and all the reflections that are going on inside this item because you're just looking and capturing these shapes you're just being faithful to life as the artist which was so powerful for me when I started to learn and level up but as you'll see we're about to take a huge dive downwards sadly because Despite starting to level up and making work that's much stronger, I was deviating away from the things that were working constantly because I was just always experimenting and always putting out too much effusive energy to be able to really see very consistent results. So some things would be way up here, some things would be way down here in terms of quality. So you're going to see that as we proceed. This piece was something I did in my graduate portfolio, um, just a weird creature design thing inspired by seashells and you know cryptids and things like that and then we have another still life and i'm pretty fond of this one i like the edges and the brushwork and um you know some of the geometry is kind of wonky but the the, the brushwork i still enjoy and, and enjoying the way that light and fire and all these things were reflecting on the dagger we had from like the renaissance fair and all these little candles we lit and put potpourri inside of a um, you know, glass container. So learning, having fun, enjoying time with friends who like art, which I always recommend. And then more sketchbook stuff, practicing anatomy, practicing my shading, practicing my drawing style, and still working on backgrounds, <laughs> still trying to get those backgrounds down. This is from reference and it still looks so sloppy and choppy just because I cannot get things to look um, cohesive or or nice yet. I'm just like hacking away at it as hard as I can but still sticking to the reference. Then I did some fan art of course. We had you know fun playing video games when we were done with school. Um, you know me and my buddies who graduated so this is Peacock from Skullgirls, the person that I main because I tend to play zoners and fighting games. Pisses off all my friends. Pisses off everybody online. I don't care. I love playing zoners. So this uh, was more of I think Fran Xavier Winterhalter study. I'm not 100% sure that was him, but you know, just more master copies, copying the masters, trying to figure out how they made stuff look so good, and making stuff that looks, you know, not even half as good as what the masters made, but trying to close that gap. So master studies, life studies, you're seeing all of that come into play. And then here's more life studies as well, um, just putting up pieces of cloth and trying to understand the folds and drapery, very powerful for painting. Uh, and then I would go and apply that from imagination. So this is where my imagination work starts to get a little closer to the stuff that I'm using reference for. So I think this one I called Yellow Poison or something. So she's, I don't think this is the finished version, but as you can see, the anatomy is getting better. The general compositions are starting to make more sense. I'm leaving a border around things. I'm starting to understand some stuff in 2013. So uh, still doing these drawing studies as well, even if they're from the masters or from random stock ref photo photo poses online or Pinterest or whatever, um, you know, trying out stuff I was learning in landscapes and you can see there's like really ugly value transitions here. I was still 23 working on this and you know, it has some vibes. It's starting to come together as an illustration, but again, some technical issues that really hold it back. Uh, life study of my old car. Fun fact, my first car was a 1989 Ford Escort. It was a crust bucket and it barely got me to my internship at Fantasy Flight Games. People were honking at me on the freeway because I couldn't go over like 50 miles an hour and they were just like losing their absolute mind because they couldn't go 75 or 80 behind me in a 65 zone. So I was just like, you know what? If you hit my car, it's made out of pure steel. So you're gonna have fun. Uh, at one point, my mom actually uh, braked really hard when I gave her this car and destroyed the <laughs> old mechanisms inside so we just had to donate it. 
Um, this is some of my first attempt at concept art where I'm trying to like reimagine chess pieces as sci-fi classes and as you can see I'm starting to think about design now like oh the rook has like these motifs and the bishop has these ones and you know you're seeing um, just me taking things I love like Mass Effect or fantasy games and trying to mold them into ideas I was having which you know however not really successful it was still when I started to think about design and concept art. Uh, I was trying to also emulate some of my favorite artists which have very painterly styles like Jamie Jones. I did a five minute video on how to find your style which you can check out on the channel as well. Uh, came out kind of okay but very very far far cry from the mastery that is Jamie Jones. Uh, again still trying to get there in terms of that mastery or try to apply what I was learning to landscapes but not looking too great really. Uh, just uh, same mistake of like the guy in the jellyfish but with slightly better quality work arguably but not by much. Uh, just making the same mistakes over and over but in some cases getting very lucky you know having pieces that had some impact or some illustrative verve like this master and student type work where it's like this old dude who's got you know old creature from dark crystal type world with magic and he's showing like this little girl like oh you can do magic too and you're like the apprentice and here's how you can you know make a little cute dragon thing out of all of our magic that we're doing and so more story keeping it black and white keeping it simple keeping it you know how I can understand it at my level of skill uh, more still lifes just at my buddy's house uh, again not my favorite still life but it still looks better than stuff from imagination studying Sargent I believe this is a portrait of his sister if I'm not mistaken um, this might be Polonov or some other awesome Russian artist who I was studying uh, so just trying to get better at landscapes by understanding people who do rad landscapes uh, again another Russian artist study the name escapes me but it's a really cool piece that this study doesn't do justice to but I still learned a fair amount um, trying to apply the stuff that I was learning to my own pieces and ideas which of course stiffen up immediately or deviate in some way um, but there's some cool things going on here but also some very stiff weird things and not a lot of thought behind the design or the drawing or the subdivisions just trying to finish paintings so going back to more still lifes you know stress balls with that with little dog toy bites out of them and just taking random stuff from like Salvation Army and studying it uh, trying to get better and then I was doing these 30 minute speed paints or what they called spit paints which was a group on Facebook where people would only do 30 minute pieces of art so I was doing that for a while because inattentive ADHD it's a really fun way to work but it's not a very productive way of getting better I will say good way to learn to sketch bad way to learn to finish so I did a couple of those there's like a weird dragon thing still one of my better looking dragons even though I did it fairly quickly uh, and if you guys are OGs and you remember this was one of the first things that popped off on YouTube for me I have since privated the video because I am a drawing course channel now uh, this is when I called myself power painters because that's all I did at that time was I was trying to paint then my beginner drawing course video took off and I'm like well this is where we're at now so I just made the channel all about drawing and the painting stuff sort of fell to the wayside and I took that part of me and I used it for freelance and I took the drawing part of me and I used it for this channel so that's when I schismed off in terms of like how I was splitting my time and focus and energies um, and that was around 2014 so I've been graduated for about a year and a half at this point so this was the final of a lion thief sort of dude I was thinking of for again inspired by Magic the Gathering thinking I'm gonna work for Wizards of the Coast and then I was still trying out sci-fi ideas too, like this piece, which is um, just trying to have a composition that I could imagine as like a game or book cover. So there's some decent stuff going on here. Like some of this rendering isn't so bad and the subdivisions are starting to make sense. Like I'm not going as crazy as I used to with the armor, but then we still have lots of my old mistakes, lots of thick, weird looking plates and stuff flattening out. Um, you know, creature guy looking like some of my creatures that I make and some cool, um, understanding of anatomy and design starting to show through things are starting to get more cohesive more competent at this point and I'm still doing still lives again studying a lot from life uh, just random objects that I have around the house uh, like this guy this baby right here and I've told stories about this guy uh, on my YouTube already just how it was one of the first times I got exposed to art in a way I really enjoyed in high five in the after school ceramics program so I studied that and I really like the brushwork here these have intention these brush marks have intention and I really looked at how light was falling across its surface and you see there's no lines almost anywhere everything is starting to look like a painting at this point so all the life studies were going better than all of my imagination work which tended to look like this so even though I was still deviating from what I was learning in those life studies um, I was still getting better ever so slightly 
Um, this doesn't have a lot of motivation behind it or anything like that, but at least the subdivisions aren't as crazy and some of the rendering is looking decent and so are the proportions. So I am getting a little bit better even though I'm fighting very hard for it. This piece I'm not a huge fan of. It was very demotivated and I didn't understand what I was doing, but I pushed it for probably 10 hours and I knew that it just wasn't going to go anywhere great or at least I couldn't figure out a way to make it go somewhere great. It was again sort of an exercise of here's a couple figures, here's something going on. It's like a dude using the tree to capture the creature and you know, a little bit of story, a little bit of meh, but um, it's just not strong enough to be considered like a final illustration and it would need a lot more planning to even you know start rendering to this point because it's just not dynamic enough it's just not interesting enough this is one of the first commissions i finished that i actually liked before i burned out really hard on commissions which i'll talk more about in other videos probably um, people loved this one i put it on pinterest put it on deviantart got a lot of love i think i got paid 150 bucks to do it and the person really liked it it was their mouse character from i think a paizo game or something so it wasn't for paizo but it was their tabletop rpg character and i just i rocked it on this one somehow that metal arm looks pretty nasty the subdivision actually tend to work there you know I gave him some cool bullets from like a gun inspired by Mass Effect and things were just starting to come together in terms of how I was painting how I was using reference and how I was understanding the process and getting rid of all my lines uh, just not doing the same those those same old mistakes so this one was a terrible commission the dude kept giving me revisions and that's when I learned how to set boundaries with clients and not let them give me so many revisions and say like if it's this much money you get this many things to say about it otherwise we're done uh, this was 2014 so I was getting freelance work after a year of studying post-college graduated in 2013 studied for an additional year and started to get freelance work from private clients so that's what you're seeing here is this character uh, more master studies, always more master studies, still learning, still trying to grow, still trying to understand the masters. And this was the turning point piece for me, not because of this piece specifically, this piece. Now, this piece was the piece that opened up a lot of doors for me. I got to go to California with writers and illustrators of the future. I did not win the final contest, but they paid for my flight, gave us a whole workshop, me and some other illustrators. Uh, this one got me a lot of freelance work over the years. It was just something where I pushed myself to my limit at the time, and it really made a lot of sense uh, as far as like the composition. It looks like an eye. You know, he's a triangle. Some of the stuff is just really working, and it just opened up, like I said, a lot of doors. And I, to this day, is still think it's one of my strongest pieces, even though there's stuff I would do way different uh, now. It was something that I really enjoyed, used a lot of reference for, took photos of myself, just put a lot into it, probably about a good 25 hours. Um, but yeah, it just ended up working really nicely for me and was a big part of my portfolio for a while and it started here. But this is when I realized you could really push yourself. And I used that as an opportunity because I'm like, this is looking solid enough to really push myself. And of course, this was uh, before conceptart.org got taken down. I was Durgence there, and I was Einver on Crimson Daggers. This is Cyberpunk Parkour Runner, so my idea of what Cyberpunk looked like, just a cool, you know, half um, or augmented kind of girl with pinkish skin and blue and pink hair and like a cool kind of alt girl style outfit who uses like these strands to kind of fling herself around the city while doing parkour and being a courier of cool intel or something. Uh, more still lifes, always more still lifes, still figuring out how to render, looking at old crunchy pieces of bread and D&D &D dice and flash drives and brushes. So yeah, you know how it is. Uh, this is actually really funny too, because I had a really bad hard boiled egg that just didn't turn out good. So I decided I'm just going to paint it instead of eat it. And this was the result. It didn't have eyes and a face. Um, it was something I added later, but it was just for fun. And the rest of it was really cool to render on. So you can see like little shells. You can see I'm starting to understand edges and take edges away and soften them and understand how light is going to carve form in our eyes. So the still lives are really paying off at this point, but I stopped doing them, of course, because they start working. Uh, this is one of the other pieces that got me to go to California with writers and illustrators of the future. And it was a tiefling from D&D, &D, again, hoping to get work from Wizards, which I have since abandoned that notion because I have different goals, different dreams, different plans as a more grown up version of myself. But this was was one that got me a lot of work throughout the years because people love their tieflings. Um, this is the version of the Azure Acolyte, I called it, that isn't as amped up as the final version, but it was the in-between stage, again finished in 2014. This was the other piece that got me to go to Cali, which was a commission, again to about 200 bucks, uh, their goblin queen character who had like the dragon bone crown and some like really cool gestures and I did a lot of studies before I actually went through with the final illustration which was uncommon for me I would just usually like one thumbnail and finish it out this one I did not do that I did my due diligence and it showed um, just looks decent you know looks 
relatively solid, cool pose, makes sense. The cloth looks like cloth, um, the metal looks like crunchy metal, and the bone looks like bone. So it's, it's just like you have to follow a certain process and procedure and do your due diligence or the stuff will fall apart on you. And you have to do the same stuff every time because there is sort of a science to art, the same way there is a science to baking. Uh, it's a recipe, and if you don't follow the recipe and you don't have your checklist down and leave you know, yourself in certain stages for certain amounts of time, it's going to start, you know, having really variegated results, some of which are not very tasty. Um, and then you have this guy here, who is another really powerful piece for me in terms of the painterly style I try to capture. This is, I don't know, like the Verdant Summon or something. And it's just a really cool draconic being and all those dragon drawings started to finally pay off, even though I hid the feet. Uh, I really like the effect I did here with the dappled light and the little like pseudo mage dude who I didn't really detail because he wasn't the main focus. And then a lot of this really cool stuff, I believe I started with a photo and then I just painted over it so the colors already were working for me. I only needed to worry about brushes and drawing and like the value separation and the design. So just solving some of the problems up front. So I've showed you stuff pretty much from 2014 to about 2016. So we're still kind of in that realm. This is just one that I start with with a photo and it just ended up working really well for painting over that photo because again I solve a lot of the color problems I'm usually struggling with and I have detail that makes sense from a photographic perspective and I can just focus on the drawing and some of the tonal work. So that's a process I use a lot is starting with a photo and just painting over it because a lot of the stuff that I don't know as like theory or practice is solved ahead of time by just working with a strong basis which is that photo. Um, and then because when you see I, if I'm just doing raw painting then I'm, I'm having to focus on things that I I usually focus on like learning how to render detail and texture and certain colors so I never really did studies for that the life studies did help in a way but I didn't have a process even though I could just replicate what I was seeing I didn't have an understanding that let me do it from my head as easy so I'm still just learning planes doing tonal work uh, doing lots of sketches like just chronically sketching and never finishing anything just so much experimentation never really documenting my process never getting clear of where I want to go uh, you know always switching up subject matter in terms of environment figures creatures robots it's like just not really having a ton of focus, again, inattentive ADHD, looking for novelty, uh, growing up in the age of social media where your brain is constantly getting hijacked and your dopamine doesn't feel right. And uh, it was just something like having to get through all of that in my 20s. And so you're going to see a lot of stuff, again, just varying in quality wildly. Like if I was a stock and you were seeing like my, uh, you know, history from like this a period from 2013 all the way up to 2023 which is now you would see like some crazy peaks and valleys but a lot of lows because I just never got super clear on where I was heading uh, and I was just trying to keep up my practice and not burn out from client work which is really not super fulfilling but I was doing these studies all the time these little tiny things um, and still playing around in my sketchbook getting some decent results you see I'm still pretty strong in my drawing uh, way stronger than I am in my painting even still to this day even though I know way more about painting now than I did when I'm showing you um, these works uh, and I have just this black mage fan art because I love the Final Fantasy series I love all the classes huge fan um, really cool sort of dagger knife dude from 2014 just loving the fantasy loving these ideas that were looking sort of demon soulsy uh, study of Velasquez uh, more tonal uh, still doing these portrait studies after Sargent, after other artists, really loving working from portraits and trying to make my faces way better, so I learn a lot that way. Um, you know, still trying to use less brush strokes, just get the same point across, and trying to work with edges more and doing color nuance. I wasn't color picking from the things, so still learning a little bit more about color here. This one turned out kind of cute. I don't remember if it was like Daniel Gerhardt's or another artist, but I'm still fond of this study. I like the little patches of color nuance very much. Um, this is something from my head. So of course you see I'm going back to like these very stiff, weak, like weaker pieces from my head. And I, whenever I'm using reference when I'm painting things are way better. So I just, I just never get the lesson though. I never get like the, oh, if you're gonna go from, you know, your head, you should at least do a study first from reference and then look at the study and so you don't feel bad about looking at the reference. I still had some weird idea until I was like probably 30 years old or 29 years old and I'm 32 now where it's like it's just not fun to do it from reference even if it doesn't feel like cheating I'm like that's how you study but then you work from your head and so my results again they still varied even if I was using reference um, or doing like still lives things like that um, this is a photo of me that I took when I was living in uptown of Minneapolis and I just studied that you know still crazy brushwork uh, trying to understand things from a you know photographic perspective 
uh, again, doing all these little sketches with a little more narrative, just like, you know, father and son in this crazy post-apocalyptic world. Um, same sort of style, just simplifying everything down, just doing little shapes and compositional elements and trying to be painterly. Uh, and then doing stuff like this where I would, you know, take those learnings of simplified little studies and blow them up into something that has more finish. So this is actually a full tutorial available in the Art Maxian pack. It's called Ray of Light, where like this dual wielding angel uh, with indigo light on her is blasting through this worm, or I think it's like um, I forget what type of dragon doesn't have legs, but it's one of those. And so you see all my creature studies coming to play, all of my color and light keeping it simple with just purple and yellow, so very complimentary. Stuff I learned from James Gurney's um, imaginative realism. Maybe it was color and light. Either way, uh, I'm starting to understand that a little bit, but then you can see stuff starts to fall apart here with like that same sort of armor problem I was doing. I think this one was finished in 2016. Uh, sometimes I would try to finish pieces just for the sake of finishing them, kind of like rolling the dice if I could make something look as cool as like the Azure Acolyte or some of those other pieces I really liked, but I would blast it with finish and it still wouldn't turn out very impactful just because the idea wasn't that strong of the sketch. Um, and here's where we start to get more into design. So I focus more on drawing and design later with like very cohesive challenges as opposed to like just doing my own thing I would join challenges like there were challenges on the Crimson Dagger Swarm I don't think they're running anymore but you can find challenges in Facebook groups or other forums art challenges are everywhere if you look for them and um, or even competitions on ArtStation and this was like a I forget what the prompt was it was something Halloween something spooky and I had this idea for like if I was going to be a concept artist for a video game and I had this girl who like she lost a light in her eyes and it was taken away and she's like her name is Wisp and so she can like summon creatures with her little lantern and it was like this whole idea that I built up and you know designed around um, before I ever got into um, the final rendering of the piece which you can see the final piece actually falls apart but the ideas that were here were kind of cool and I was thinking like you know if she could summon a really cool humanoid scarecrow dude after learning to summon the hand and maybe it's a little like monster rancher where you can breed the monster up or something um, you know or like Pokemon and so I, I like started to play with different compositions and ideas and just sketch them out and it's almost like how you're thinking out loud in your sketchbook so you can elaborate later um, and I did more of that like color study type stuff and was almost ready to start the final and it just didn't turn out well so I'm not going to show it it just it, it's just so weak and I've showed so much weak work already but then I was still going in and doing these commissions where I found a way to do them faster and not paint them and still charge about 150 bucks so I was uh, I, this was for a friend so I, I gave him a discount but this was his character um, just sort of a swordfish type dude and you can see I'm not painting here I'm just doing nice fills and separations and focusing on good anatomy um, you know good design and structures and sort of a loose sketchy style that just has a nice fill to it and I did the same style with just a little more shading but I'm not like going in and actually rendering out edges or anything like that it's just you know separate the lights and the shadows and this was another commission in that style uh, and then I got hired to work on a lot of visual novels over the years they paid a lot of my freelance um, money from you know 2014 all the way up to like the last VN I've worked on is was this year just doing backgrounds for it so uh, it's kind of like an untapped niche for freelance artists that I found uh, this was a character from a VN that never came out um, but yeah I enjoyed designing her stylistically and I was still doing studies you know in the 2016 region just doing lots of cool poses figuring out how I'm gonna make more cool poses for my illustrations or concept art just enjoying learning and drawing the figure which I always have it's probably the thing I put some of the most mileage into and then we get back to my Moleskine sketchbook I've showed some of these in my sketchbook videos on my channel or on my Instagram um, just like cool ideas like I think I discovered James Jean in 2016 or 2017 and his work had a lot of impact on me in terms of like exploring more weird and abstract ideas not all this fantasy sci-fi concept art illustration business but more of like a fine art type of thinking so yet again my focus shifted and I was trying out ideas with what I had already practiced and knew but trying to get a little more uh, I guess surreal with it so you'll see a lot of that in these sketchbook times so this is 2016 um, and then I still was going back to my roots of fantasy and sci-fi illustration and so this is one of the best pieces I've ever done in that vein to this day just a really cool girl summoning a giant elephant this did really well on reddit people are making fan magic cards of it and stuff um, it's still to me very very fun because 
Uh, even though this hill isn't rendered that great, these two look really cool to me and I had a lot of fun designing like the magical glyph or whatever and the style. I just really enjoyed the overall style. It feels really, really uh, true to what I studied in terms of painting and drawing and it all came full circle so I got lucky on this one after rendering it out for 20 hours or so. Um, this one, weaker than that one definitely, um, but I still spent a good 20 hours on it. Um, just it's it's one I have a full illustration documented on Indie Art Maxian pack, and it really really helped me um, to understand how I can take an illustration far and have it look pretty cool by the end. But still, there's you know some value mistakes. Uh, I didn't really figure out the colors. I didn't do enough prep work for this one for it to be considered like a super great illustration. And you know there's still a lot of weirdness with the rendering. Like I just was going into some of my old habits of like what do I do with the time I'm spending on this? And you know my goal is just to spend 20 hours on something, and I hit that goal but I didn't really think about all of the things that go into an illustration which it should be um, an illustration is basically comes from the Latin word illustrare which kinda translates in the end to uh, an image meant to evoke spiritual or intellectual enlightenment and this one I'd say it kind of does that a little bit you know it's like these dark spirits and these cool spirits and you know you can think about some cool stuff regarding it but there's a lot of technical stuff holding it back so then I was you know in 2017 living in a different house working on my traditional work again jumping into ink for the first time in a sincere way so I worked a lot of pencil before this but now I'm doing inktober so these are some of my inktober pieces that got finished up with that strange blend of like surrealism and odd ideas mixing with that fantasy sci-fi illustration concept art stuff so you know very weird very experimental again uh, just playing around with uh, what I knew and what I had studied about drawing so I'm 27 years old at this point still kind of running way you know wide but only like two miles deep in terms of my ability to focus in and pick a niche and actually have some success so this is you know still fun and still a great learning experience and it was really fun to work with ink and to you know keep my palette limited and I had a lot of um, success making a cohesive set of things but then I started to you know miss pencil so I went back to pencil again of course and here's where I'm doing some bar studies from the bar drawing course which I learned a lot from about rendering and form and lighting it's probably one of the best ways to get that classical masterful rendering um, but it's all in black and white so you can learn a lot about tone and value and form and volume um, but not a lot about actually taking that into color necessarily and then I was just you know, showing some sketchbook stuff from 2017, 2018, just fan art of Cyclops. I like the design of his jacket and his outfit and the pose dynamics and the fun of it. Um, here's me still trying to be painterly but not really putting my full heart into it. You know, just a little 30 minute painting of like a kind of a water mage dude. So sort of an idea of him standing barefoot on a beach, summoning some sand or messing with it or whatever. Uh, and here's where I go back to my drawing. So again, I'm bouncing all over the place, even when I'm 27, 28, 29. Um, but this time I'm working on a project that's very near and dear to me called Satellite Psychic Saga. One of the things that I plan on writing into a novel and having a nice juicy art book for, for some of the more finished pieces that are going to make it into that. So this is one of the biggest supporting characters in the story, Gemina Flynn. Had a great time designing her, the asymmetries in her outfit, keeping things cohesive, you know, just nice little patches of value separation. Um, she's very pale, uh, comes from kind of Irish roots, so trying to keep uh, real world ideas and translate them. Then we have Rai, who is like the collegiate boxer, and the kind of abilities he gets are different from Gemina, and he's one of the supporting characters as well, so one of the cooler ideas was just playing with his outfit, playing with all the little belts and buckles and um, just kind of this neo fashion that I was working out for the characters outfits and style. Um, this is a life drawing of my girlfriend now wife who I met in 2018 and we have been dating for five years and I've been doing this dance between like am I going to keep illustrating and doing concept art am I going to do my YouTube channel and she's been there with me through all of it and so now she is my beloved wife and this is her from the back as I drew her in our apartment that we lived in in uh, 2018 to about 20. 20-ish? 2020-ish? Yeah. So we moved in November of 2020 um, during the fun time that the world went through. And this is just a piece I did, I think, in 2019, 2018, just to speed paint, you know, getting more illustrative, uh, just trying to balance compositional elements, do cool stuff like that. All right, so we're going to finish this video off in the archive. I'm not going to show you absolutely everything because it's available for download. This is all the stuff that I took off so I could rebrand and kind of change my own identity around. So this is just part of the art journey here. I'm going to show you some of these with preview that 
I got a lot of work from or seemed to work very well for me in my portfolio because they're kind of the highlight reel. So this one is the Geomancer. I actually had somebody license this one for me for about 200 bucks and then it got me a lot of work in the future, you know, worth about 10, 20 K of uh, freelance that came to me through this piece alone. Probably one of my most popular pieces online um, just because uh, it worked out fairly well. I don't know why people like this one so much, but Maybe it just looks classic, you know, fantasy enough. This one is also very popular for me. This is, is the Adamant Exterminator, another tutorial that has the full illustration in the Art Maxian package on the website. So this one is really, really big in terms of getting me work, getting me more exposure, helping people find my different courses and packs and tutorials. This one was one that my friend actually bugged me to finish because he loved the dynamic pose so much. So this is what I ended up with. And again, I was trying to go for Magic the Gathering at the time, which I'm not anymore, but I really like how it led some of the work in a very cool direction. Uh, this one is one that got me again a fair bit of work. It was one of my favorite pieces to work on and I started on the iPad and brought it over and finished it in Photoshop. It's the first time I've done that so that was sort of a benchmark for me. So I think I finished this one around 2019 maybe. Being able to look back and say well this was this, one of the stronger things I finished so I get to put it in my portfolio like this portrait from a profile of like a satyr dude. So um, that's kind of neat. Uh, the oh, last thing I'm going to end on, since I promised it in the beginning, is my redoing of the Teen Titans. So we're going to open up all of those right now. And we have uh, Robin turned into Sparrow, because I, I just figure I flipped the gender because it's more fun to design that way and I feel like I can make it my own. So Raven became Sparrow. I called, um, oh, not Raven became Sparrow. These are all birds. Okay, so Robin became Sparrow. Raven became Riven, and then we have uh, Beast Girl. So this is uh, what I did during my mentorship, which was on One Fantastic Week's YouTube channel. You can check it out. Uh, they helped me work through a lot of the artistic stuff that really it, I'm still digesting to this day, even though it was in 2021. And this was one of my favorite assignments for that particular mentorship, which lasted 16 weeks, thanks to uh, Pete Morbacher and Sam Flegel, both phenomenal artists in their own right, dudes I still look up to to this day. Um, they helped me to really suss out my own style, uh, what I was good at. Uh, even though I was 31 years old, I still was didn't have enough perspective or didn't have mentors up until that point telling me like what to do and what not to do. But this is my version of Cyborg from 2021. It took me a long time to come full circle and go back around and try again to do fan art. I actually had some really bad painted fan art of the Teen Titans, which I'm not going to show here. But needless to say, I want to thank you hit my mic. Needless to say, I want to thank you for watching. I've done a lot, a lot, a lot of art over the years and so much of it was pretty bad and just could have been avoided if I had just attuned myself to the principles I teach on this YouTube channel, stayed more focused, gotten more cohesive with what I wanted to dial in on and didn't jump around so much in terms of subject matter, style, medium, experimentation. But you know what? I'm still relatively young and I'm very, very grateful that I have what I have and I learned so much that's going to be invaluable for me moving forward as I get more concrete with my style, my subject matter, and what I specialize in. Because as you can see, I have a lot of interests and they're all creative, so you have to kind of pick your niche pick what you're naturally good at and then go hard on the fundamentals and find secret and awesome techniques that only you can devise through study and feedback and stuff like that so again this has been my art journey you can download all of the pieces i have in the archive in the description box below for free to take a look at them yourself if i could leave you with one thing to remember for the end of this video it is don't be afraid to just like decimate the past after you have learned from it and be ready to just start now and move forward into the future. Get the lesson and hang up the phone. So after you realize all the mistakes you made and all the stuff you did or how you went about it inefficiently, start to understand that you can be cohesive, you can specialize, you can find what you're good at and unique at and what you really love to do and not just run a bunch of different ways like that other voices online tell you or the industry tells you or what you think you should do. Tune in to your own art spirit and just rock as hard as you can in terms of that wavelength. Thanks for watching. I'm Tay Payton. You can check out all my stuff, whether it's courses or you know free art I have for you to download or free lessons in the description box below. Please like, share, and subscribe. This was a long video to make, and I am very, very tired and a little bit warm because I had to keep the sweater on even though my house is efficiently heated. At any rate, there's nothing to complain about. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. I hope you learned a lot, and please share all of your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next video. Take care and happy creating.